Good afternoon, RC fans. Racing 393. And this is uh, part two of my Traxxas Fortec Nitro sort of rebuild, if you like. So this is the motor. Uh, I say rebuilt. All I've done is took it apart, checked it and put it back together. So nothing was wrong with the car. It had plenty of uh, pinch, as far as I'm aware. Um, you can see here it's now looking absolutely stunning. Uh, a TRX 15. Uh, for the sake of, by the time I get it to put back in the chassis, um, I just put a little, a little note there for me, um, head bolts loose. Uh, I haven't done them up super tight, they're just sort of nipped um, because I didn't want to lose any bits and pieces. Uh, but it has got superb um, compression, went together, it's very clean and tidy inside, there's no um, wear or noisy bearings or anything like that so anything i've noticed i didn't clean that there look God, that's annoying that's on the back plate it's because i didn't actually clean the back plate too much but it's all gone together lovely um okay, okay so this is part two so the next bit to do is a clean and rebuild the carburetor looks in fairly good condition everything seems to be there um, I'm going to strip it down, make sure all the O-rings and washers are where they should be, clean them out and put it all back together in a sort of, a, put it back together in a standard um, jet setting as well as from a, from what I can think, what I think should work. And then we'll go from there. So uh, I'll be back in a minute when the carburetor is nice and clean. So this video, well, this part of the video is going to show you how to turn this to this engine's done um it's been cleaned and reinstalled i've just put it into a bag uh, there for now um a close-up of the chassis i've just given it a bit of a wipe down to be honest i haven't done anything to it i haven't taken too much off it i've tried to keep it as minimalistic as possible it, it's a bit of a fiddly as i said before um kit well, it's not really a kit is it as I'm ready to run, but you obviously can take it apart. It's not quite as straightforward as um, as, as modular, um, which doesn't make it easy to work on. But what I'm going to do today, I'm sure, so I'm going to work on the front first. I'm going to rebuild one of the shocks. I'm not going to film all four. What's the point? But I, I enjoy rebuilding shock absorbers. I keep saying shock absorbers. It's obviously slang talk there, isn't it? Shock absorbers. Um, they feel okay. Um, it's got different springs on. It's got that as like a dark coloured spring here. I'm pointing the wrong one. And then we've got a, a, a sort of a normal, you know, here. So I don't know whether it's the same... It feels the same, but I don't know whether these are oil shocks or friction shocks until I get them apart. So let me um, just take this one off. I'll do this one as it's here. We'll give it a strip down, a clean up, see what we're faced with. Um, we've got some O-ring grease, if it's got O-rings in it. We've got medium shock oil. I also use a little bit of this. Um, it's it's 40,000 weight um, diff oil. You can use it. I use it in a lot of, lot of applications, to be honest. Um, I always tend to put a tiny bit in with the shocks as it just helps with the um, dampening on the cars that I've done. So anyway, without further ado, let me, um, let's get this shock absorber shock absorber removed i 
sometimes the easiest of tasks ends up a bit of a mission. I'm not sure what kind of bolt this is. Whether it's a Phillips or like a hex. I think we found our first problem. So I've just taken this off. You can see the bottom link is actually broken. See that? It has broke now. So it needs a different end. Um, other that or a ball joint bottom. Uh, I'll have to have a look to see what to see what I've got. So that's the shock absorber all dismantled. You can see it there. I've just recorded this without recording and I'm just talking to myself like you do. I've got to do it again. Anyway, taking it all apart. The shock shaft is bent and the shock end is broken. So that's probably where that has taken a very hard hit on this end, I expect. Um, it's not until you get things stripped down that you realise what it is, what's bent, what isn't. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna take this apart, and then I'm gonna attempt to straighten that, um, find an end for that, as I said, and then gradually put it back together. Um, it had no oil in it. There's no surprise there. Um, but yeah, I'm not, I don't really want to pay any money to get any new shocks at the moment. I quite like, this is about restoring and, rep and repairing rather than just going out and buying. Um, and it, I'm trying to enhance it with the least amount of putting money into it as I can. But there's some things which I'm going to have to, if I haven't got it, then I'll have to buy it when I, anyway, let me, uh, let me get this bit sorted out, straightened it. It's not a hundred percent, and I can still see a slight curve, or I can still see a bend in it, but it's straighter than it was. So the next task is to clean these out a little bit. I'm going to put some um, put the seals back in. I've got a different end here, which I'm going to put on. So it's pretty much similar to what came off, but I'm going to use hopefully. Rather than screw it in that side, I'm going to put a little ball joint. It should work. Just clean this out with a little bit of rag. There's no oil in it anyway, to be honest. Not just, just a bit of plastic body, so they're not particularly good shock absorbers. Tiny bit of rock oil. Um, this is just, I've said before, rock oil o-ring grease. It's just grease. There's a nice green colour, <laughs> if you like that sort of thing. So put some of this in. So we've got a, little, a blue o-ring that goes in. It's the same o-ring, we've got like a plastic spacer and then I'm going to put a bit more grease on the end don't put too much on there because it sort of compresses that goes in there I'll put a little more oil o-ring grease on top and then we've got the end that just goes on. Like so. so that's that done. And just put this inside. It might push some of the uh, green paste out. That's not a problem. I'll just put it back in there. <laughs> it just doesn't matter. Pull that through. So it's relatively smooth in there. 
need to try and put this end on now if I can. Hopefully it will find its thread. Um, but grip that with a little bit of some pliers. Where did I put the pliers? I, I put them somewhere and I don't know where the hell they are. I know you're supposed to use rag around there, but these are, like I say, these are super old. So that's the end. Um, I'm going to put some grease in there so some little well some of this a very very small amount and I'm using like just Tamiya standard medium oil shock oil so I'm gonna put some of this in obviously these are really small shock absorbers so you can see they don't actually take very much you can hear the uh sort of the oil and the air seems to be working fine that goes on top this is where the mess it gets a bit messy and then we got the actual cap on the end which we'll just screw down like that give it a wipe down and all these are just rebuilding old units but just doing giving it a little bit of love and attention i mean you can feel that works now as a shock absorber <laughs> it's quite stiff but it certainly feels better than they do on that side so now the problem is now is i've got to rebuild this so we have got that there's a spring seat on there. Got the sort of the spacer. So you just put the spacers in, they're not adjustable. The spring should go on there. I'm hoping I might not need the spacer on there now. Because the bottom of the shock should actually fit inside that top hat. It doesn't, it sort of butts up against it. The one that came off, the ends are a lot smaller, so it will fit inside that top hat. So I'm gonna take the take the spacer out. I mean there's less movement. But there's enough on there to warrant being a shock absorber. So I just put a ball joint on the bottom. Um Spacer should go in there. That goes on there. And another washer on there, plastic washer. And then a little tiny little 10 mil, eight mil whatever size this is 5.5 so that shouldn't be too tight and that should should pop on there you have to bear with me a minute while I put this on And there you have a repaired or service shock. The only downside, there's not as much movement on it because the bottom there should go into that top hat and it butts up against it. The other one sits inside it. So the shock can open up a little bit more. So that's the side I haven't done. There's no resistance there at all. This one, Yeah, damping. It's not. It's not moving too much, but it's done. So that at the moment is how I'm going to do the other shocks. Um, I'm going to probably do the other. I'm going to do the others off camera. There's no point in doing them on camera. 
I will come back again at some point when I've got something different to show you as I carry on with this build. Other front shock um, taken apart. Just thought I'd show you this. That's the other shaft. Look at that. <laughs> it's expected though, isn't it? So it's very soft metal, to be fair. So we'll, we'll get that straightened and get it rebuilt. Well, there you go. It's a bit straighter. Better than it was. So just reassemble it now, make a and build another shock. I'm not going to show you that. Just want to show you the when you take things apart, the kind of stuff you might be faced with. That's both on there now. They're, they're different springs, I think. Um, that works like a damper. There's not much movement in that one because of the bottom mat. This one's the standard, what was on there anyway. Um, you can see it's damping now. So they're good. Um, the, again, a bit Heath Robinson-like, but uh, see that one needs the spacer because the top hat or the spring platform sits over the end of the shock the other side um, I, I can't put the splat platform on there the uh, spacer because it's there's not a lot of movement it would do I mean I think at the minute I might have sort something out on that um, for now I'll keep it as it is I'll see how it sits you can see the, sh the, the wishbones one's kind of up a little bit the other one is definitely down so one is definitely higher than the other but i did expect that uh yeah so that's uh that's all on there incidentally i looked at that shocker part and that's what was inside it I got that one there it was just nothing in it i don't know how what that was and that one was just loose so I'll, I'll put another shock in there shock piston with two two holes you know so it's the same um, it goes to show when people do this, they bodge around. I mean, a lot of people just do it and they didn't. And this was like it when it was new, I can't see it, but a lot of people just ain't got a clue what they're doing. But um, that's part of the enjoyment, I guess, of um, rebuilding or re um, made, buying second-hand RC cars and nitros or whatever and restoring them to the best of best that I can without spending a fortune. Anyway... I'll carry on. I won't film the other rear shocks. No point. Um, but that will be it for now. Um, I'll move on to the next stage once I have some bits.